What up, what up, that's Mix Squad, and welcome back, guys. Hey, it's your boy Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. How are you guys doing today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys, hey, you're having a rough day. Let's turn it around right now with some good energy and some good content, guys. All right? Yes. So my lovely wife, who we have today, babe? Who okay, babe, today we'll be reacting to find out why the worst American president ever was so loved. What? And this is Thomas Soul. Uh-oh. All right. Uh-oh. I'm ready. I'm liking this guy. I'm loving this he's guy. He's highly educated, and I think he know what you know what he's talking about. Most definitely. All right, so guys, before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on your post notification bell so you guys be notified. We appreciate the love and support. Here we go. Good energy, good content. A few clips of the President of the United States delivering his State of the Union address earlier this year. Clip number one. Higher education can't be a luxury. It is an economic imperative that every family in America should be able to afford. Higher education, an imperative. All he's asking is that all young Americans should have the same opportunity to get a really good education that Tom Sowell had. Tom? I love the way, the use of the word opportunity. Uh, you know, I had as much opportunity to become an NBA star as Michael Jordan had. It just happens that there was some difference in skill. And so the same thing with education. There is no point trying to run people through institutions that they have very little interest in uh, and that they may not be suited for. Uh, in fact, I would argue that one of the problems of American education is you have a lot of people in college who have no interest in what a college is supposed to be. Nor is there any reason why they should. And so the intellect, the... Wow. So the you water down yeah. the education of the people who are there to get an education because of the people who are not there for that purpose and who, are, and, and, and therefore, and who you're trying to appease in some way. And is the impulse that we just saw of Barack Obama and his supporters uh, to in constantly, more and more people, run them through college, run them yes. through college... And that's what? That's to enhance the standing of intellectuals in society, to teach more and more Americans to defer to intellectuals? Is that part of what's going on? It's to win votes, frankly. All right. Straightforward wow. as that. Wow. President Obama once again. Stop it right there for a minute. Wow. Wow, that was deep. Tell the people anything. So he doesn't believe in Just to get votes. Yeah, just to get votes. Because every child is not college bound. It's, that's four years of college. So um, basically, tell lies to get what you want. Right, and then, you know, you, you're you going to be owing all this student debt, basically, if you don't get a scholarship or whatever, or you don't have the parents to send you to college. And think about how many people you know who have, you know, these degrees, have their master's, doctorate, have all of these degrees, and they are not working in that field. Scary. Right? What about the ones with the degrees that can't get the jobs? Wow. The degree is not even a criteria for the job. It right. doesn't even qualify you to get the job. This is deep. Here we go. Thomas Sowell. He's, 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 he, I mean, he's good. I will not cede the wind or solar or battery industry to China or Germany because we refuse to make the same commitment here. We've subsidized oil companies for a century. That's long enough. This is pre. This is pre cylinder, of course. Pre cylinder. <laughs> oh. Look at Tom. Tom. You know, this notion of picking out something and calling it a good thing, like education or affordable housing or whatever it might be, uh, everything is a matter of trade off. Uh, God, uh, what, what did the band say there? That, that he will not cede wind or solar or battis, battery, the battery industry to China or Germany because we refuse to make the same commitment. It's amazing that, that here is a man talking about five different industries in none of which he has the slightest experience. You know, but because he has these degrees from the places you mentioned, uh, he thinks, and, and people have told him how clever he is, he now thinks that he can, can, can do this. So can you explain... No human wow. on this planet could do this. Can you explain, Tom, the particular appeal to intellectuals of the kind you describe here 
of the green movement, of the environmental movement. Oh, it, it shows them again in the role they relish. They're the, they're the wise and noble, forcing the, re forcing the rest of us poor dummies uh, to do what's right, uh, you know, e e even though we don't want to. So it's what your old friend Karl Marx would have described as the will to power. Yes. All right. You don't want to. You don't want to cut them a little slight. That's. I mean, you're just saying it's ego and pride and vanity. Yes. All right. <laughs> wow. Once again, the president of the United States. I mean, hold on. He's just saying this with so much confidence, like you know. Ego, pride, and vanity, making us think that he can do the impossible. Right, and he's Feeding saying us. no human being can do this. Oh my gosh. I would like to, to see them have a sit down. Obama and Thomas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Woo, it would get pretty heated, wouldn't it? <laughs> because these are these are two bright guys, and it's like they're they're saying two different things, though. It's like it's like they're not agreeing. One is basing it on facts, and one is basing it on fantasy. Right here we go. <laughs> here we go, guys. Tax reform should follow the Buffett rule. If you make more than a million dollars a year, you should not pay less than thirty percent in taxes. And my Republican friend Tom Coburn is right. Washington should stop subsidizing millionaires. In fact, if you're earning a million dollars a year, you shouldn't get special tax subsidies or deductions. On the other hand, if you make under $250,000 a year, like 98% of American families, your taxes shouldn't go up. I love it. Okay. <laughs> when people keep their own money, that's called subsidizing them. I love it. You know, that, that's the brilliance of intellectuals. That they, 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 they can use words in such a valuable way that they can... I mean, the, uh, Obama has an absolute talent for saying things that make no sense, but not only sound plausible, but inspiring. You know, subsidi they, we're subsidizing the oil companies when they deduct the cost of doing business you know, in order to arrive at the figure of how much net income they have. Everybody does that. Right. So... This notion, though, that, that mm -hmm. if, you, if you're rich, you ought to pay more. Straightforward enough, no? It is straightforward to us. It's also straightforward nonsense. Why is that? Um, people don't... But they often speak of people who are rich as people who happen to have money. Right. Extremely few people happen to have money. There aren't that many Rockefellers. Well, but Rockefeller didn't happen to have money. But his heirs happened to have it. Yes, my heirs happened right. to have money. So you're drawing Rock, wow. Rock, Rock, Rockefeller, he, Rockefeller reduced the coils, cost of oil to a fraction of what it had been before him, right. benefiting millions of people across the country. Okay. Therefore, they bought their oil from Rockefeller rather than from people who had more expensive ways of producing oil. For example, one of them being the, the uh, use of uh, tank cars on the railroads. The progressives were, were livid that Rockefeller uh, could ship his oil at a cheaper price than the other producers. It never occurred to them that oil, uh, Rockefeller shipped his oil in tank cars, which are a hell of a lot cheaper to transport than in barrels. Right. I mean, we still measure oil in barrels today, but we ship it in tankers. Right. Mm. And uh, that's how he became a, a multi-billionaire. So we know from the study of economic history that wealthy people get wealthy by creating jobs, lowering prices of, yes. of products rather than Bill Gates, the richest man in America, one of the richest men in the world, invented an, invented an entire industry that yes. simply didn't. All right. We know all that. And we also know, as we mentioned earlier, that cutting taxes worked to spur economic growth in the 20s. Again, under John Kennedy in the six, actually, the, it was Johnson who ended up most of the tax cuts took place, let's call it under the 60s, and then again in Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. And then George W. Bush. And George W. Bush. So how is it that he can stand there in the face of this overwhelming evidence and be taken seriously? I'm not asking now about Barack Obama as an intellectual. I'm asking about the people listening to him. The, that's the question of the hour. You have people who uh, don't stop and think. You've had dumbed-down education. You've had propagandistic education. And people, he's, what he's saying connects with all those, with all those kinds of things. All right. uh, in fact, it goes the other way, too. I was just doing some research on Detroit and its decline, and they kept raising the city income tax. And every time they raised the tax rate, the tax revenues went down.
uh, in, in 2008, uh, Charles Gibson right, put this to, to Obama when he was a candidate. He said, why are you for raising the tax rate on the rich? Because um, you often get more revenue at lower tax rates than at the higher tax rates. And he mm-hmm. said, well, it's a question of social justice. In other words, he doesn't really care about whether the government raises more revenues. If he can get people mad at the rich and they vote for him, then, the, then it's a success. Just as uh, mm-hmm. Coleman uh, Young's policies in Detroit were a great political success for him. Mm-hmm. It ruined Detroit, but it, it didn't. I just have, uh, you and I have to be reading on a similar subject. From 1950 to the deep. present, Isn't two things it? happened. One was that the population of the United States of America roughly doubled, mm. and the other was that the population of Detroit fell by roughly half. Yes. Unbelievable. All right. That's crazy. You write in Intellectuals in Society about the intellectual's view of diplomacy and military affairs. One last clip of the President of the United States. Uh, okay, Thank you, here we go. <laughs> Look at Iran. Through the power of our diplomacy, a world that was once divided about how to deal with Iran's nuclear program now stands as one. The regime is more isolated than ever before. Its leaders are faced with crippling sanctions. And as long as they shirk their responsibilities, this pressure will not relent. Tom, will you sleep better tonight having heard that? I'm sorry, but when Obama is talking, this guy's like cringing, like he he doesn't agree with one word. He thinks it's total nonsense, right? (laughs) Like it's BS. Like like Obama don't know what he's talking about. And then Tom, as he breaks it down. And then we get his side. This is like, wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I mean, I may take a sleeping pill so I can forget it. Mm-hmm. The, this, this man has diddled with Iran to the point where, where the military people are saying, you know, even if we decide to go in and, and bomb that place, they are so dispersed, so far underground, it's by no means clear that we can do it. The time when he was going through all this wonderful diplomacy he talks about was precisely the time when those things were put underground and dispersed. It's like, it's like when Hitler was arming, you know, that, as Churchill said, at one point, a memorandum could have stopped Hitler, mm. you know, because the power was so lopsidedly on the side of the Western democracies. Uh, it's like they could say, stop rearming or else. And we can't do that with, 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 with we, they diddled, they diddled with, with Iran to the point where now we don't know. Now, but there's something interesting about, to me. Mm. Whereas with social policy, intellectuals tend to go for the policies mm. that give them greater power. What greater power could an intellectual seek than military power, the power to blow things up? So why, oh, why because, because, they because, because, from... Oh, oh because, because they believe that, again, uh, that their intellect is the, is, is the unique factor that is going to save us. And to say that there are a bunch of military people uh, are going to be more effective than doing all these terribly clever things that Obama is doing uh, undermines their whole position. I see. All right. Wow. Wow. Okay, so basically what's going on wow, is wow, you wow. slap some education on it, mm, mm, slap mm, it up with some intellect, and you feed it to the people, <laughs> and we just jump on eat it, it up. just eat it like we're being spoon-fed. Like we're being spoon-fed, and it's it's crazy. Wow. It's crazy, right? This is basically so tell us things that are impossible to do and make us, you know, think that, you know, we can feed it with some big some big vocabulary, some big ass, words. Right? And we're like, oh, he knows what he's talking about. This is so just interesting. To get a, just to get votes. To be educated about things that we don't know about. You know, um just to get some votes. Wow. Just to get votes. Guys, this guy Thomas so well um so, I'm starting to like really gravitate towards him, right? You know, gravitate towards him because he, it seems like he's educating us. Um, a second round. Yeah, and like I like education. to I like to know both sides. You know, yes. I like to hear both sides and just try to figure it out for myself. You know, gain my yeah. own understanding of you know of what's going on, and it wow. sounds pretty. Yeah, because to me, 
He said, like, they were so far underground, it was impossible to bomb so to these bomb guys. Them, them, like, these guys and set up. Y'all didn't diddle with them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now it's too late. I mean, he broke down everything that he was saying, and and, and um, it's clear that he, he got some facts, you know. Wow, fucking like back in school, guys. This... <laughs> This is so interesting. It is. Topics we've never even discussed before. I want to learn. It's crazy how people can vote without even knowing what's going on. Yeah. In the world. They don't know what's going on. Or what these people really stand for. That they're vote that they're putting in these positions in the in office. Like it's crazy. So um guys, let us know what you think about this video. Do you think that Thomas Sowell is correct about Obama? He Is he speaking points. facts? I think you got some key points. About President Obama? Let us know in the comments yes, section. Yes. And let's keep it respectful. Let's yes. keep it respectful. Politics. You know, it, like we can't learn unless we keep it respectful and teach with love, you know? Yeah, because the information is out there and we deserve to know. Yeah, everybody As American does. citizens, right? Most we definitely. deserve to know the truth. What's going on out there? Yes. Like, so we are on our explain. journey. Right. If we say something that sounds stupid, basically, let's break it down so everybody can understand what we're saying. If we wow. sound stupid, it's okay because we're learning. We are learning. Yes. So you guys are <laughs> on the journey with us. If and this you is so much fun. Anything you think we should know about, drop it in the comments section. Yep. Drop it off, guys. If you want right. to drop the link, drop the link so we can go directly to it. All and right. we appreciate the love. Let's go ahead and put that one in the books. Damn. That's like a nice little school session. I like that. <laughs> That's yes. what's up. All right, guys. We sound off until next time. Hey, it's your boy, Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. All right, guys. We love you guys. Have an amazing guys. day on purpose. On purpose. That's what's up.